I used to say, I don't have enough time. In reality, I just had my priorities wrong. And since then, I made a conscious effort to really improve my time management skills. So much so that several people have asked me, how do I consistently manage to put out YouTube videos and blog posts, write a newsletter every single week, and also exercise nearly every single day whilst having a full-time job? Well, in this video, I want to break down my process and hopefully offer some tips for those of you who are struggling to meet all your priorities. I always start by fully auditing my schedule to determine what kind of time I have to play with. So for me, because I work full time, 9am to 5.30pm is completely blocked out of my calendar. Sure, there may be times in the day like lunch where I could do other things, but these are quite inconsistent, so I don't add them in. Exercise and health to me is a non-negotiable because you well, you can't get more health. It's a finite resource and to me it's equally if not more important than my day job and it must be added into my calendar to make sure I do them. In general, I break down my health into the following categories. Sleep, you must get your seven to nine hours. For me, I roughly go to bed around 11 o'clock and wake up at seven o'clock. So again, this is time blocked in my calendar. I play hockey three times a week. So every Tuesday and Thursday nights, I have training from eight o'clock to 10 o'clock and I have matches on Saturdays. Saturdays, it can vary, but typically it's 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. of that whole day taken up by hockey. And finally, I like to do other exercise, like a run or gym session. So I book these in. I normally run at lunch times because I work from home and I normally have a gym session on Sunday mornings. I like to keep my Friday nights and weekends completely free because this is when I'll typically have any social events and having relationships and keeping up relationships is really important. You can now see I'm slowly adding all the non-negotiables and the things I must do into my calendar. And what this will allow me to do is see the pocket of time where I have space to do other forms of work or anything else I'd rather do in my spare time. From looking at my calendar, you'll see that every morning, 7.30 to 9 a.m., I have free. Now, I work from home quite a lot, so that time is free. Some days that might be a commute to work, but the majority of time, 7.30 to 9 a.m., I have free time to do what I want. Likewise, Monday and Wednesday nights, I also have a lot of free time where I can do an hour or two of extra personal work if I wanted to. I try to do all my personal related projects in this designated blocks and not rely too much on the weekend. Now, that's not to say that I don't work during the weekend. It's only because my schedule was a lot more versatile then. So it's really hard to pencil in certain times where I know I'll be free. So after performing this time analysis of my week, you'll see that I roughly have about 10 hours per week that I can do anything I want to, which is amazing, right? That's a lot of time and more than you realize. I recommend carrying out a similar audit of your schedule. Just go through your week and just put in all the things that you must do. And slowly over time, you see this visual representation of time where you can do things that you want to do. And managing your time like this way is really useful. And I promise you a lot of people aren't doing this, but it's really simple and really easy. As much as I'd love to, I can't do everything. So I try to get it really clear in my head what is a priority. Now, the reason this really helps me is because when you know your priorities, anything that's not a priority, you've kind of given yourself a license to suck at them. So if you're not making progress in all those areas, that's fine because you know you're not prioritizing them. So there's no expectation for them to improve or grow. The way I've designed my schedule is that my day job, health and relationships should run autopilot. I don't need to think about it too much and I kind of treat myself like a robot in that I just do those things in my calendar and don't really think much about it. So I now need to decide what is the next important thing that I want to work on in those 10 hours I have free each week. And for me, it's basically running my so-called content or creative business. And the goal of my business is basically just to provide advice and tips for people looking to break into data science. So there I have kind of my thing I wanna work on and have a clear goal of what I'm working on will do, right? And so that kind of really simple objective and strategy is really clear in my head and that's what I'm working towards. And then I ask myself, what is the best way of meeting that objective? Well, for me, it's creating YouTube videos because YouTube videos have a big audience. There's no paywall. I get to connect with my community and I also find it really fun. So giving people advice to break into data science 
it's probably the best on YouTube in my opinion. There are also secondary things I like to focus on like LinkedIn posting and blogging. But again, these are often a byproduct of my YouTube videos and it's a form of me to redistribute my content and just give it to a larger audience out there and hopefully reach more people. Finally, I have a newsletter that I write which is kind of like a supplementary material to these videos but it's not overly optimized and I treat it more as a hobby and more of a fun pet project. Either way, I still like to get it out every single week and what I normally do is that because I have probably enough time on my weekends to do this, I just tell myself, well, the newsletter will be done on either Friday night or the weekend. Again, I can't be certain exactly what time I will have, but it takes me about two hours to write. And so chances are I will have some two hour free time in my, my weekend to do it. After going through that process, I'm very clear in my priorities. YouTube's number one, there's my newsletter, there's my blogging platform Medium, and finally it's LinkedIn. And you see now I'm very clear on exactly what I'm doing and where my focus is going on. And so if my LinkedIn posting slips, that's okay because it's not the number one priority I'm doing. I can now use these priorities to fill up my calendar. So every morning, 7.30 to 9 will be YouTube work, whether that'll be filming a video, scripting, doing a thumbnail, just anything. Anything about YouTube is every morning. Like I said, my newsletter takes me about two to three hours to write. So I'll put that somewhere in the weekends when I have time, I'll do it then. The remaining things are not overly important to me. So I'll just do them when I have time or feel up to it. But I'm not gonna put pressure on myself to achieve them. Over time, I've realized there is no superpower to get things done, but the closest thing is pure focus. Last year, I read this book called Stolen Focus by Johan Harry, and it really blew my mind because it discusses the problem we have at the moment with the attention epidemic and how people are really struggling to focus. In this book, he says something like the average office worker can only concentrate on a task for three minutes, which is crazy. And there's multiple reasons they discuss in the book, such as social media, nutrition, exhaustion, and there's 12 reasons he goes into, but they're all very interesting. And it's kind of insightful how the world is kind of built to distract us and keep our focus away from things. And being able to harness the power of focus is really, really big, particularly nowadays, where a lot of people can't concentrate for long periods of time. Focus is essential to produce high quality work. And in the book, Johan goes over some of the things he's implemented, at least to reduce the amount of distractions he gets. And I've copied them and kind of adjusted some of them in my own daily life. Some of the things that have really helped me is to delete all social media apps from my phone. So I don't have TikTok and I've removed Instagram, Twitter, YouTube from my phone. This way I have less of an urge or the frictions increased between me going on my phone and opening up these social media apps and basically just wasting time. So I recommend you try this one out because it's really easy and it's really effective. When I'm working, I always have my phone on silent mode and I have it in another room. Again, this just increased the friction. It means I'm less likely to go on my phone and get distracted. And finally, I try to take the approach of digital minimalism as much as possible. So I basically unsubscribed from any emails that I don't need or don't need to get. And I try to demute all my notifications. So that way when I'm working, I don't get these annoying pings coming up all the time that get me distracted. These basic habits and tips have really benefited me. So I recommend you try them and see how you get on. On the theme of focus, every personal work block I have I make sure that I'm working on the one most important thing at that time. I don't multitask because research shows that after multitasking, it takes you 23 minutes to regain focus on that new task. So you're basically just wasting time. Before I start working, I really make it clear in my head what I'm gonna work on for the next hour. Again, it could be scripting a video, filming a video, doing a thumbnail. And my focus is gonna go on that one thing for that whole period of time and not get distracted. The power of doing just the most important thing every single day is truly underrated. Imagine how much progress you can make if you just did the most important thing every single day for the whole year. I guarantee you there'll be a lot of progress. There's also like a hierarchy of doing one thing. Let me explain. So in each of my hour blocks or hour and a half blocks, I would focus strictly on YouTube work. And that YouTube work again could be making a video, scripting a thumbnail, etc. And over the course of the week, my one thing is basically data science or YouTube work for data science, right? And over the course of the whole year, a lot of the stuff I'm doing revolves around data science. So you see how I'm doing one thing, but I'm kind of extrapolating it. So my YouTube videos are all about data science advice, data science tips. 
My newsletter, likewise, is all about data science. My blogging is all about data science. And my day job is all about data science. So what you see here is that, yes, I'm doing multiple things, but they kind of center around one theme. So in the grand scheme of things, I'm only doing one thing. And that really helps me and kind of reduces the need to constantly context switch between different areas. So if you can, try and align all your things you want to do under one umbrella or in one theme, because I don't know, it may not help you, but I found it really, really helps me. Let's quickly summarize the key points. Number one is make sure you do an audit of your schedule to see what free time you actually have. Number two is then during those three periods, decide on one or two things you really want to focus on and be crystal clear on your goals. Number three, try and improve your ability to focus. This could be just removing your phone, uh, putting in another room, deleting social media apps because focus is a real superpower. They allow you to do exactly what you want to do during those free time blocks. Number four, try and do one thing and if possible, do the most important thing you can at that point in time because that's really powerful and doing it every single day, you'll make a lot of progress. If you enjoyed this video and you want more advice like this, then make sure you check out my weekly newsletter, Edition of Data. It's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing data scientist. If that sounds interesting, I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check out.